Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Sunday morning service on this last Sunday in May. And the weather is lovely. And the Bible says this is the day the Lord hath made. We will be glad and rejoice in it. And we've posted some songs that you can uh, sing along with us on the Facebook page. And we're going to start this morning by singing number 288. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. And I'd encourage you to sing along with us. And we're going to sing all four verses of this good song, Would You Be Free From Your Burden of Sin. Amen. Please join along. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power. sing to the end of that goes and the blood shall never lose its power no never no never Jesus blood the bells will sing forever it shall never lose its power amen very high song and uh, good song to start the vocal chords this morning amen so praise the Lord. Good to see you all this morning. And uh, we're looking forward to worshiping the Lord in our songs and also through the Word of God. Amen. And uh, everyone I hear has been doing well. I got to see my daughter yesterday, which was a blessing. Amen. She came through from Edinburgh. And I'm looking forward in the next uh, few weeks to maybe meeting with some of you. Amen. In parks and places like that as we are allowed to right now. And uh, we're looking forward to that. And as I said, if we happen to bring a Bible and we sing a few songs, Okay, that's fine too, amen, so praise the Lord for that. Uh, I want to mention this morning, it's a brother Chris from Ayr's birthday. He messaged me this morning. He's gotten back in contact, 
and uh, he may be joining us and uh, I want him to know that we're thinking about him and uh, we thank the Lord for his birthday, amen. It's good to have a birthday and it's good to have a spiritual birthday, amen. And we're going to sing happy birthday to Brother Chris this morning. We didn't do this last week for Brother Gregor and those who had a birthday, but we'll do it for you as well, amen. We'll do our wee Christian uh, happy birthday song. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. <coughs> and remember the Christian version. Happy birthday you, to you, only one will not do. Take Christ as your Savior, and then you'll have two. Amen. Happy birthday to you, only one will not do. Take Christ as your Savior, and then you'll have two. Amen. It's good to have two birthdays. Amen. I know the Queen has two birthdays. She has an official birthday and she has a ceremonial birthday. But uh, if you're a child of God this morning, you have two birthdays as well. Amen. So that's a, an excuse for cake twice a year. Amen. That's a good excuse. Amen. I'll take it. What can I say? We're going to continue singing our service this morning. Uh, number 631. 631 in our song books. And that's another good song for us to sing. Amen. And I hope you found the place on the Facebook page where you have the songs. And this song is He Lives. Amen. We don't serve a dead Savior. Amen. We serve a living Savior. And he's in the world today. And he's working in our lives. And we can thank God for that. Amen. And I'm enjoying the weather right now. Very nice sunny weather. And thank the Lord for that. Amen. I serve a risen Savior. Okay. 
Amen. He lives. Amen. Thank God for that. I'm glad we serve a risen Savior, and he's in the world today. Amen. He's not a dead Savior like the Savior of Buddhism or Islam or Confucianism or Mormonism and all these different isms. Amen. He lives, and he lives within our hearts, and thank God for that. Amen. Uh, Debbie and I are going to sing a wee special song today, and hope it's a blessing to you. And it's a song called Whatever It Takes. Amen. Whatever It Takes. Have you ever said to God, you know, I'll follow you, whatever it takes? Amen. Because sometimes the Christian life is easy. Not often, sometimes. And sometimes the Christian life can be very difficult, amen. But no matter if you're in the valleys or in the mountaintops, the Lord is with you, and that's the most important thing, amen. The Lord being with you. And we thank God for that. So this song is called Whatever It Takes. As I said, I hope it's a blessing and encouragement to you, amen. That wasn't the right chord. There's a voice calling me from an old rugged tree, and he whispers, draw closer to me. Leave this world.
so true amen the words of the lord jesus christ are very simple and yet very powerful follow thou me amen we're not here to follow the world to follow the panic and the fear that we see everywhere we're here to follow the lord jesus christ amen and thank god for that and I praise the lord for that amen we're going to continue by singing another song number 279 in our song books and as i said you'll find the words uh there in our Facebook page, uh, 279. Haven't quite got them on the church website yet, but we'll be getting them there soon, amen. And it's a wonderful thing to know that, you know, you can tell people, anyone can get saved, amen. Anyone. And being saved is very simple. This is a great old song, Sinners Jesus Will Receive, amen. Christ receiveth sinful men, amen. And I have got a few uh, requests for some songs to sing, and uh, hopefully we'll be singing them soon, amen. I'm still working on those, some of those songs. Sinner Jesus will receive sound this word of grace to all through the heavenly pathway lead. down low in that last part because it was very high amen hopefully you're able to sing it high and uh, i'm sure the lord will bless you for that okay we're going to turn to god's word just now to hebrews chapter 11 so if you would get your bibles i uh, will be looking at hebrews chapter 11 and i'm going to look at moses this morning and the choices that he made by faith amen to serve god and you know the choices he made didn't make a lot of sense as far as the world is concerned but they made a lot of sense as far as God is concerned. And uh, we're going to look at that in Hebrews chapter 11. So I'd encourage you, encourage you to turn there in your Bible. And if Debbie wants to go uh, uh, to another place and get her Bible, she can do that. Amen. But Hebrews chapter 11, we're going to read verse number 23 through verse number 29. And also in Exodus chapter number 2, we're going to read from there. Amen. And of course, as always, we'll be reading from the King James Bible. Amen. God's perfect word. 
If you don't have one, uh, message me and I'll do my best to make sure you do have one very soon. Amen. So Hebrews chapter 11, as I said, we're going to begin our reading at verse number 23 through verse number 29. Hebrews chapter 11. And I'll wear my glasses so I can see. Amen. That's what happens when you get older. Amen. You need glasses. Okay. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 23 says this. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the, the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt for he had respect unto the, in, unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and, and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians, as saying to do, were drowned. And also Exodus chapter 2, and we're going to read from verse number 1 through verse number 10 of Exodus chapter 2. And as I said, verse number 1 through 10, and also verses 21 through 25. I'll give you a, a wee second to find that in the Bible, amen, God's Word. Exodus chapter 2, the second book of the Old Testament, and what the Jewish people call the Torah, the Torah. And we're looking at uh, the second book, which is the book of Exodus, chapter 2. And verse number 1 says this. And there went a man of the house of Levi mm -hmm. and took to a wife, a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him, that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could no longer hide him, she took him for, for him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein. And she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. And his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river, and her maidens walked along by the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew woman? that she may nurse the child for thee. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go, and the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And the child grew, and she brought it him unto, Pharaoh, unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And she called his name Moses, and she said, Because I drew him out of the water. And also chapter uh, 2, verse 21 says this, And Moses was, not, was, was content to dwell with the man, and he gave Moses Zipporah, his daughter, and she bare him a son, and he called his name Gershom, for he said, I have been a stranger in a strange land. And it came to pass in the process of, of time that the king of Egypt died, and the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage, and they cried, and their cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage. And God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham and with Isaac and with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel, and God had respect unto them. Amen. God had respect unto them. A wonderful portion of the word of God. Amen. Showing how God looks after his children. Amen. And he does. He looks after his children. Amen. And he knows what he's doing. And he's not surprised. Amen. By the things that are going on today. But as, as I said, we've been going through a series, a study on living by faith. And we're looking at this man this morning we call Moses, who is a very well-known man, amen. One of the most well-known men in all the Bible, amen. Most people seem to know about him. Many religions honor him and revere him. Uh, from not just Christianity and Judaism, but also Islam and many other religions, amen. They call him the lawgiver. And it's amazing how God worked in his life, and not only his life, but the life of his parents also. Because during a time when they were killing the babies, and they hid Moses for three months, 
because he was a goodly child, he was a blessing, amen. And let me, let me say this morning that children are a blessing, amen. Sometimes when they get into their teenage years and things like that, we wonder if they're a blessing, but they are, amen. Children are a blessing. The Bible calls them an heritage of the Lord, and I thank God that God has sent children our way, and, and children are a blessing. And God worked in the background in Moses' life, and Moses' mother took Moses in an ark and placed him in the river, and, and, and he went down that river, and she, I believe she did that by faith, amen. She didn't know what was going to happen. But at just the right time, Pharaoh's daughter happened to come along there and just happened to see this, this ark of bulrushes. And when they drew it to the land, she saw Moses and the babe wept and it touched her heart. And that was just an accident. No, it wasn't. And then she saw this child and decided, I'm going to raise this child for my own. And then she went to Moses' mother and said, I want you to raise and take care of this child and I will pay you. So God honored the faith of Moses' mother, amen. And God made that he would be taken care of by his own mother. So this morning we're going to look at Moses and the choices that he made. The choices he made. You know, someone has said many years ago, life is not about dreams. It's about choices, amen. And you can dream what your life could be or what your life will be. You can make all the plans that you want to make. But the choices that you make will determine the destination you arrive at. May I say first this morning, the choice of whether you receive the Lord Jesus Christ is your personal Savior is the greatest choice that you can make. Amen. The Bible says, choose ye this day whom you will serve. The Bible says, for today is the day of salvation. Now is the appointed time. The greatest choice you could ever make in this world is the choice to believe and be saved. Amen. That's a wonderful choice. I made that choice many years ago. Amen. And I've never looked back. I've never The day has never come. And I've never heard a child of God say, oh, I wish I'd never received the Lord as my Savior. It's a wonderful thing to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. It's a great day, man. But not only the choice is to be saved, but the choice is in how you're going to live after you're saved, amen. I wish I could say that all Christians, after they get saved, serve the Lord and follow him faithfully and grow in grace and, and go on with God and, and each year gets better and better. I wish... I could say that, but I can't. And as a Christian, you have to make a choice every day. Whom you will serve, whom you will follow. Will you follow yourself? Will you follow this world? Will you follow the devil? Will you follow all these false religions? Or will you say, as we sing that song so often, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. It's important to follow the Lord, amen. And I hope you're following him today, amen. I always seem to forget to put this microphone in the right place. Hopefully you've been able to hear so far. I'm sure you, you are able to, but that will make it a little bit better. So we're looking at Moses and the choices he made. And as I said, life is not about dreams, it's about choices, amen. And as we look at the example that we have in the book of Hebrews, we see that the example of Moses is the example that every child of God is called upon to make. It says he refused, he forsook, and he chose. We're going to look at those this morning. First of all, you know, when, when we look at Moses' life, we see that he lived a long period of time. He lived about 120 years. Now, the first 40 years in his life, God prepared him in Egypt. He was going to be the son of the king, the son of Pharaoh. The second 40 years, he went into the desert. And he stayed there for 40 years. And in the middle of that, mm -hmm. God called him to go back and to liberate his people after 40 years. You know, one of the things about God is, as you'll soon know in the Christian life, that is that God is not in a hurry. Amen. You know, we look at time and we, we get so anxious sometimes. We get so perplexed that time is going by. And I was talking to my daughter yesterday about, you know, it's been 10 weeks since we've seen each other. And it seems like a long time. 
But you know, in eternity, 10 weeks is not a long time, amen. It's not a long time at all. And God is never late. He's never in a hurry. He always is in his time. The problem is most of the time is that our time doesn't run in accordance to his time and to his choosing. So we're going to look at the description and the decisions that Noah made this morning. So first of all, if you look at Hebrews chapter 11, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 24, and we'll see the first thing that Moses did. Amen. And it's amazing that this is the same thing that you and I should do today. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 24. It says, by faith, uh, by faith Moses, when, his, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Now, it could be said that Moses made this decision when he was about 40 years of, of age, that he was grown up. Amen. You know, there's some people I know who never grow up. Not only do they not grow up as far as this world is concerned, but they don't grow up spiritually. And you know, the Bible says that we are to grow in grace. But some people, they live their life on the milk of the word and they never venture forth to grow with the Lord. And when you grow with the Lord, you have to step out into the deep, amen. Sometimes like people like to play in the spiritual paddle pool of life, just getting their ankles wet, not venturing too far. But if you're going to grow in grace, if you're going to go on with the Lord, you're going to have to launch out into the deep. You're going to have to do more than you think you can do. Amen. Moses made this decision. There came a time. Now, remember, he grew up in the palace. He grew up in the lap of luxury. He had everything you possibly could want. But he made a decision to refuse the things of the world and to be with the people of God. To refuse the things of this world. As I've said before many times, the Bible says that we are not to be conformed to this world, but we are to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. You know, the world would say, if you decide to follow Jesus, if you decide to give up the good things of this world, that you are out of your mind, that you are crazy, that there's something wrong with you. But let me tell you, if you decide to follow Jesus, there's something right with you. And if you decide to follow the world, there is something wrong with you, biblically speaking. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 2, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Amen. Love not the world. That's what Moses did. He made a decision to refuse to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. You know, this world would like to see us conform, would like to see us. You can be religious, that's fine, but just don't get too excited about it. Don't get too extreme about following Jesus. Just fit in and most importantly, be quiet. But what did Moses choose when he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose, look at verse number 25, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. The world would say that's crazy talk. That's cuckoo talk. You don't choose affliction. You don't choose the hard life. You choose the easy life. But following Jesus is not the easy life, amen. Following Jesus can be difficult sometimes, amen. Moses was in the prime of his life. He was in the best possible position. He maybe one day could have inherited all the land of Egypt. He could have been Pharaoh. He could have said, well, you know, I'll wait till I become Pharaoh and I will influence from within. But the Bible says we're called out of this world. We're not of this world. We're not to be conformed to this world. We're not to think like the world thinks. We're not to act 
like the world acts. We are supposed to be a, pecu a peculiar people, a holy people, a chosen generation. The first thing about Moses' decision, it involved a refusal. Amen. You know, sometimes people play around with the decision to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe when they come to church, they'll sing the songs of Zion and, and they'll sing these hymns and they'll rejoice in the Lord and everything's great. And they say, yes, I'm going to start living for the Lord. But then they walk out of the door. Yeah, that's a different story, amen. Then they get home. Then something happens. Something annoys them. Some event causes them to deviate from the, the walk that God has called them to. Sometimes you just have to say to the devil, no, I'm refusing to do that again. I'm refusing to live the life that I lived before. I'm refusing to live like the devil wants, like my family wants. I'm going to refuse all that and I'm going to choose rather to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, it involved a refusal. And sometimes, you know, in the Christian life, we have to discern, to discern between right and wrong. Amen. Between good and better. Between better and excellent. That's why the Bible says that he may prove what is a good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Obviously, there are many things in life, the sins, the outward things. We know that's wrong. Amen. I hope you do. But when it comes to the more subtle things in the Christian life, do we choose what's good for our life, what's acceptable for our life, or what is God's perfect will for our lives? He chose to suffer affliction with the people of God. He left the palace. He left all the authority, the respect, the dignity that he had, and he joined the slaves. How far would you go this morning to follow Jesus? We sang that song, my wife and I, for whatever it takes to be more like you. That's what I'll be willing to, you, to do. How far would you go to follow the Lord Jesus? What would you give up for him? Moses left the palace. He left all that behind. His life was set for good and prosperity. He could have anything he wanted at that time. He said, no, I'm going to enjoy, I'm going to join the slaves. That's why you find many times in the epistles in the New Testament, it talks about Paul, a servant. If you're going to follow the Lord, you're going to have to lower yourself down to where he wants you to be, amen? The world thinks, oh, I need to go up. I need to advance my career. I need to make more of my life. But the truth is, if you want to grow in grace, you've got to get humble, amen? You've got to lower yourself. He chose affliction. It involved a great refusal. He turned that all away. May I ask this morning, what does it cost you and I to, to serve the Lord Jesus? We look at the things that we're, we're suffering at the moment. We're not able to meet as a church corporately. We're not able to do the things we like to do. We're really suffering, aren't we? Are we? Does it really cost us that much? You look in the past, the saints, they've left, they've left their families. They've left their jobs. They've left all the good things they had in life and they suffered to follow Jesus. You know, if you're going to follow Jesus, there are times of suffering, amen. I'm not going to hide that from you. There are times. There are times when you walk through the valley. I was thinking today of uh, John Harper, who was on the Titanic. He went there with his family. He was going to preach in some meetings over in America and he got on that ship that was unsinkable. That the captain said at the time, even God couldn't sink the Titanic. You know, if I heard a captain say that, I would immediately get off the ship. 
That's a challenge to God, amen. And as the Titanic went across the Atlantic Ocean, and at a time there wasn't supposed to be icebergs, there came an iceberg, and it hit that ship, and it sank that ship. And John, John Harper gathered his family and put them on a lifeboat, but he himself could have got on the lifeboat, but he chose, he chose to remain on a sinking ship so he could witness to those around him. The last time apparently he was seen, there was a man that he helped into a lifeboat. Again, he was swimming in the water and, he, and they could have taken him into the lifeboat. But he gave up his place so that this man could be saved in the lifeboat. Then apparently he went off swimming, looking for other people. And he came back and asked the man, are you saved yet? Are you saved yet? Do you know the Lord? And the man never answered him. And this happened two or three times. And eventually the man said, yes, I know I'm saved. Then John Harper went out and his work was done and he went on to be with the Lord. What does it cost us to follow Jesus? What do we sacrifice, really? What do we give up to follow the Lord? Very little, amen. What did God give up to save you and I? The song says, He left the splendor of heaven, knowing his destiny, destiny was a lonely cross of, Go of Golgotha, there to die for you and me. If that isn't love, then heaven's a myth. If that isn't love, for God so loved the world that he gave, his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And what does he say to you and I? Follow thou me. What does he say to you and I? Why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Moses chose to suffer afflictions rather than have the good life. He refused to be known as Pharaoh's daughter. He said, no, I'm turning my back on that. But not only that, he chose affliction rather than the pleasures of sin for a season. The pleasures of sin for a season. You know, this world and the devil offers sin and pleasure and wickedness and worldliness and conformity to his image just for a season though Paul talked in Corinthians about the light afflictions that he was going through that bring a far more eternal weight and glory sin has pleasure amen the drug addict will tell you yes the high is good the alcoholic will tell you yes the, the alcoholic stupor is fun but it's only for a season, amen. One day he'll stand before God and then suffer in eternity in the lake of fire and brimstone. I think you should avoid that, amen. I think you should choose rather to follow Jesus, even if it involves affliction and loss. Decide for the Lord Jesus Christ. He refused the treasures of Egypt. He probably walked around along with, with gold and silver and, and nice clothes. He put all that aside to become with the slaves, amen, with the slaves. Why? Because they were the people of God. From a worldly standpoint, he was mad. That was crazy talk. But from a faith standpoint, it was God's will. He was not making his choices mm -hmm. dependent upon what the world thought and what the world said. He was making those choices with an eye to eternity. Song says, only one life will soon be passed. And only what's done for Christ will last. Amen. In refusing what was wrong, he chose what was right. Amen. You see, it's not just a matter of saying no to sin. 
You have to choose the right, amen. It's not just a matter of putting away the world's music, the world's pleasures, the world's sin. You have to choose the right things. You have to choose. You must make that decision that you are going to follow the Lord, that you're going to read his word, that you're going to allow him to work in your life and change your life. Amen. That he's going to be the, 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 the Lord who controls your life. Talking about the Christian. Amen. That he's going to work in your life and that he's going to bring you to the place he wants you to be. You have to choose the right. You have to do what is right. Amen. Reading your Bible, that's right. Praying, that's right. Witnessing, that's right. Going to church, that's right. Giving, that's right. Giving your all to him, that's the right thing. You see, sometimes it's easier to choose to not choose the wrong thing mm -hmm. and then to be kind of neutral in all these things. But you have to choose the right thing. And in order to do that, you have to discern what's right through the Bible, his word. Amen. This is our standard. This is what we focus our lives through. You know, I, I, I use some glasses sometimes to, to read things because, you know, I can't see things up close very well. But what glasses do is they focus at the right level so that I can see. You know what this Bible does? It focuses what is right in your life. That's why the devil doesn't want you to read it. That's why the devil keeps you away from it. Amen. It's a spiritual battle to get into this word and read this word. Amen. Why? Because we are being conformed to his image through his word. So he, he chose affliction. He chose to be ill-treated. All of us have been seeing on the television recently of that, that poor man in America who died because that police officer kneeled on his neck. And it's a terrible thing. It's an evil thing. What we saw there was nothing less than murder. But sometimes when you follow the Lord, people will treat you ill. They will speak about you harshly. You will not be popular. You will not be part of the in crowd, amen. You won't be the one they'll call upon to go out to the parties and to the enjoyment. They'll say, ah, oh, they, they just want to talk about the Bible. They, they, they're one of these Bible thumpers. He chose to be ill-treated. You know, we want the good things in our life. We want to sit back and enjoy things and, and get the best of the world. Sometimes when you follow the Lord, you, you, you're going to be ill-treated. You're going to be disgraced. Amen. Jesus talked about that, that, that people will put your name away. They won't want to know you because you're following Jesus. Amen. Why did he do that? Let's look at verse number 26 in our chapter. We'll read verse 25 and 26. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Now notice this. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in, in Egypt for he had respect unto the recompense of, the, of reward. You know what Moses said? All that gold, all that power, all that prestige in Egypt is nothing compared to having Christ. This world has nothing. It has nothing that is greater than to have the Lord Jesus Christ. Take all this world. Jesus said, for what shall a prophet man, if he gain the whole world, lose his own soul? Moses says, I see the gold, I see the power, I see the prestige. I see what the world is offering me, the pleasures of sin for a season. I'd rather choose Christ than anything. I hope that's you today, amen. I hope that's you, that you'd rather have Jesus. As the song says, I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. 
I'd rather be his than have riches untold. I'm so glad that I'm saved, amen. I wouldn't trade that for anything. Nothing in this world. Take the world, but give me Jesus, amen. Moses said, I see all that stuff, and it's only stuff, but I see him. Esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches, amen. For he had recon recompense unto mm -hmm. the reward, amen. He looked not to time, he looked for eternity, amen. Here's what Jesus said in Luke chapter 14, verse 26 and verse 27. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whoso doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Verse 33 says, So likewise, whosoever he be of you, that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Now that doesn't mean you, 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 you lose everything in your life. It means in perspective, the Lord comes first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And it says, all these things shall be added unto you. It's what has the priority in your life. Luke chapter 6 verse 46 says, And why call ye me, Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? That's a tough one, amen. Why do you call me the Lord Jesus when you're off in sin, when you're off serving yourself, when you're off serving the world and, and making all these things for yourself? Why call ye me Lord, Lord? Do not the things which I say. I would hate for the Lord to say that to me, amen. Wouldn't you? Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 15, If you love me, keep my commandments. Amen. You see, refusing is a negative. Choosing is a positive. It's not just saying no to the world, no to self, no to the sins of this world. It's also choosing that which is right. You've got to have the balance of the two, amen. There are so many people out there who are so negative. Oh, the world is evil and, and the world is corrupt and it is. But they focus on what they see externally instead of what's been going on internally and choosing the right thing, amen. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. You see, Moses balanced all up the world for a season or Christ for eternity you know there are people out there I've witnessed to and I've, I've offered them the gospel and I've said you know you can either choose to accept the Lord or you can choose to to to, to follow the lies of the devil and they've looked him in the eye with all seriousness seriousness and said I'll choose the world and they've walked away I remember one time a few years ago, I, I stood on the door here in Glasgow and I witnessed a young lady and I could see that the Holy Spirit was working in her life and she was trembling and tears were in her eyes. And I said, would you like to be saved? And she said, I can't do it right now. I'll come to church tomorrow morning and, I, and I'll come and get saved. Never saw it again. But that was a point in time in her life when that opportunity to choose the right was there every day you and i are given that choice amen we should wake up and say lord what would you have me to do today what is your will for me today though sad to say many times christians we wait till we go to bed at night and then we think oh the lord lord and we forget you see a servant doesn't wake up and say well i wonder what i'm going to do today a servant wakes up and says, I wonder what my Lord wants for me to do today. Amen. He chose. He refused. But then he chose the right. Two things, when balanced, make for a good servant. Amen. The greatest thing the Lord can say to you is, well done, thy good and faithful servant. He had a testimony. Amen. He chose 
the reproach of, that he would get by following Christ rather than the pleasures of sin for a season. He was saying it's worth more to follow Christ than it is to stay in Egypt. How about you this morning? As a Christian, is it better for you to stay in the world, to stay in your sins and your selfishness, or to follow the Lord? You've got to choose what is right, and you've got to refuse what is evil. Refuse the evil, choose the right, and then you'll follow the Lord. Amen. You see, at the time, it didn't look like he was making a good choice. But in eternity, that choice was made plain for all to see. As I said, there are many times in a Christian life we go through difficulties, we go through trials, we go through troubles, we go through tribulation. Tribulation means troubles. But choosing Christ is the best thing we could do. He chose rather. Look at verse number 27. In Hebrews chapter 11. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Now he knew Pharaoh personally. He knew him. He knew all his staff. He knew all the, the soldiers, the general. He knew them. But by faith he saw him who is invisible. Now the world would say, you're seeing someone who's invisible? That's crazy talk. By faith. Remember what we read in chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I haven't seen the Lord Jesus Christ. Now I know a few people think they've seen visions and dreams, but that's not true, amen. But one day I'm going to see him who is invisible. And you don't do that by works. You don't do that through religion. You do it by faith. And that was the, 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 the reason why Moses made the decisions he had. He had respect unto the recompense of the reward because his eye was on Christ. His eye was on the Lord. Remember that time, the children of Israel were still slaves in Egypt. It didn't look like things were going to go the way he thought. But God had a plan, amen, and God had a man. The Bible says we are to look unto Jesus. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 and 2 says this, if ye, the, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Set your affection on things above. Amen. That's how Moses made that decision. This morning, what is your desire? Amen. Do you desire to be saved? If you're not saved this morning, you can be saved. You simply have to believe the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus. You have to believe that. Amen. You have to choose that. Amen. As a Christian, do you choose to follow the Lord, even if it involves affliction and sufferings. You know, many times Christians are, are, are willing to die for the Lord. But how about living for him? How about going through a hard life, a difficult life sometimes, in order to follow the Lord Jesus? Is it your desire to make that decision this morning? Even in the midst of all this lockdown and all this nonsense and this fear and panic and, and all these things, you can make a decision to follow Jesus. God knows what's in your future, amen. I don't know how much longer we've got in this world, amen. I'm looking for that, that shout, the voice of the archangel, amen. I'm looking for the Lord to come back. That's our blessed hope, amen. I don't know how much longer we've got in this world, but I want every day to be a day where I'm following Christ. I, it's my prayer this morning that for you who are saved, that you every day would make that decision. I'm going to follow the Lord. I'm going to refuse the evil, the sinful, what the world says is right. And I'm going to choose 
the right thing. I'm going to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. We all know what happened to Moses. God used them to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. They went through the Red Sea. They went through the wilderness. And eventually they went into the promised land. Amen. God always keeps his word. Amen. There's an old saying that says, God always gives his best to those who leave the choice with him. If you choose to follow Jesus, amen, that will glorify him. That will magnify him. God wants to work in the life of the Christian. God wants us to grow in grace. God wants to get us away from the paddling pool of spirituality where we're looking at each other and picking on each other and that person's doing this like little children, like carnal, amen. We should be known as a people who follow the Lord. Remember when the disciples in the book of Acts, when they came and they beat them, it says they took knowledge of them that they had been with the Lord. They were just ignorant people. They were Galileans. They were fishermen. It says that they marveled. Why? Because they had been with Jesus. Wow. That's a great testimony, man. I hope it's your testimony, man. Maybe your friends, your family, your, your colleagues, those you go to school with, they might say, well, I don't agree with everything they say, but I'll tell you what, they sure follow Jesus. I can, I can, one thing I can say about them, they're serious about the choices they make and the life they lead. I cannot promise you God's going to give you a rose garden. I cannot promise you God's going to give you the best car in the world, the biggest house in the world. But what I can say, if you follow Jesus... You'll get to walk with him. And as John said in 1 John, if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we are fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all iniquity. What choice are you going to make this morning? If you're not saved, I pray you choose Jesus. Amen. And you believe on him. If you are saved, I pray today, you refuse the evil, refuse the anger, refuse the sin, but choose that which is right and good concerning him. Amen. It's been a blessing to be with you this morning. If you have any prayer requests or anything like that, please message me and uh, I'll pray for you. Amen. As I always do every day. Amen. I pray for everyone in the church and uh, that God will move. Amen. In all of our lives and we'll use this time to grow and to go and to do what he wants in our life. I'm looking forward to us when we get back again soon. And until that time, let's praise the Lord. To God be the glory. Great things he hath done. So loved he the world. He gave us his son. Praise God for that. Amen. Look forward to seeing you again soon. I'll be praying for you. Amen. Pray for us. And to God be the glory. Amen.